there's one. First cast of the morning. First cast of the morning. He don't feel like a monster, but he's not bad. <clears throat> Put on a good toe. Yeah. I want to say he's not a monster, but he's a handful. That's a pretty good one. Pretty good one. That's a good way to start the morning. Come on, give him a hook back. I'm going to catch your brother. Sweet. Good morning, folks. This slick back down here at Slick Scrappy Haven. We have these brim again this morning. Caught that one on that first cast this morning on that cricket. Let's see if we can get back in here and get us some more of them. Y'all hang with us. We'll see if we can't entertain you today. It's a beautiful morning out here this morning, guys. Caught that fish on the first cast. I like there's some more in there. It's like 77 degrees this morning. Dog days of summer. We're right here at the end of July. Matter of fact, today's the first of August. Throw that sucker right back in there and catch another one on that second cast. This may be a fun day. Come in here, big boy. He's not big as that last one, but he's still big enough to eat. He's still big enough to eat. Quit that. Go back in there again. See if he's back. See if the other brother's in there. Like that right there. <clears throat> Seems to be back on the beds a little bit. We're about a, I think we're a week out from the full moon. Full moon was last weekend. So we're probably about the last quarter. Coming up on the new moon. These are some pretty decent brim up here on the banks this morning, though, so they may still be guarding them fry or something in there. Whatever it is, we're going to get back in here and catch some of them. I thought that was three casts and three fish. Let's see if we can get four. No dead cricket on here, but he ought to stink real good. Oh, I messed that one up. That was Slick's fault. It should have been four fish and four casts. Just fishing a little old slip cork the other day. And uh, a lot of people hook their crickets from the from the head back to the butt. I like to go from the butt to the head because a, a lot of times whenever I miss a fish like I did that one, if I've got a good cricket on there, if I've got him hooked from the head back, I pull, pull that thing in after I miss and the head's missing off the cricket. So I like to go from the from the butt to the head so the point of the hook's right there by the head. Seems like that's what they want to hit. I've got a little old, uh, I like that's a number six Aberdeen hook on there. I've got a couple of sinkers on there because my sinker wasn't quite big enough to, to float my cork like I want to. And then I've just got a slip cork rig that slides up and down. A little bobber stop up here. Fishing on a... Uh, what is this? It's a Berkeley lightning rod. I'm gonna say it's about a five footer, maybe five and a half, and then the Mr. Crappy Slab Slayer, Slab Shaker. I love these little old reels. I just ordered three of them in from, from the internet, so trying them out. Come on in there, buddy. There you go, there you go. That's the one I've been looking for. He feels like a decent one. Coming at me now. There you go, put on a little fight there. Oh, see that bass come up and get after him? Dang! Holy cow. Can y'all see that bass? Oh my gosh. He's still there. That bass is still there. Lord, I hope y'all can see that. That was freaking amazing. Y'all not... Y'all reckon I'll be throwing a daggone brim crankbait out here? That looked like a good idea to be. <laughs> that was freaking awesome. That is about the third, maybe, maybe the third time I think that that's ever happened to me. That's freaking cool. That's cool. Wish I could have caught him. He was a pretty good one. He'd have been a lot of big old tussle on this ultralight rig, wouldn't he? Let's see if we can get us another one. A 
Oh, that was cool. Big old bass. He probably weighed two or three pounds anyway. Here's us another. Let's see if that old bass will come back this time. Let's see if that old bass will come back this time. I don't think he's interested this time. We're just going to have to settle for the old brim. That's another decent one, though. That's another decent one. We'll mess around and have a mess for supper anyway. Can't remember if I've caught, I think five or maybe six so far. See if we can find number seven. Plus we had the big old, that bass come up there and entertain us a little bit. That was cool as crap. Look here. There's number seven. There's yeah, seven or six, I can't remember. Come on in here, big boy. He's a little bluegill. He's not a big one for sure, but he's still big enough to do what we want to do. Now, like I've been saying, these brims seem to come up here. Supposedly, they're supposed to bed on the full moon, but full moon was a week ago, so I don't guess they're necessarily bedding right now, but I, I figure they're up here garden fry at least. There's another one. There's another one. If you get in there where they're at, it's pretty daggone regular. They, they hit the, about every cast. Just got to get in the right spot. That's a whole lot darker one. He's a lot darker than the last one, but, and a bigger one. Lovely. Let's see if it's another one right in here. Like that right there. I don't think that one's quite as big as they've been being. He may be a, he may be a return fish. Yeah, I think we'll let him. We'll let him out, let him grow back up. Or grow, finish growing up. He's still a pretty decent little old fish though. A lot of fun catch. A lot of fun to catch. Let's see if I can catch him. I got three butts left on my, on my hook here now. Let's see if we can catch one on it. Not really a whole cricket, just three little old butts on there. There he is. <laughs> That's a little one for sure. <laughs> Well, he's about like the last one. Like I say, caught him on, there wasn't none, there's nothing but three little old cricket butts left on my hook. But, it worked last time, let's try it again. I got off just a little bit, I need to be about three foot to the right. Sometimes a foot can make a difference. I believe this is one of them times. May not have enough. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> Those three little old cricket butts was enough. I would a whole lot rather fish with a whole cricket. But that's living proof right there that three butts will catch fish. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, come here. Back up here. I think we'll let him go too. It was a lot of fun. Thank you, sir. I better put a new bug on here. I am just about out of bugs, though. That should have been money. Should have been money. A bunch of fry up in there. Well, I'll be dang. I just broke my stuff off. How in the heck? 
There's my cork still floating out there, and I got all this tangled up crap up here in the dang boat. Ain't that some stuff? Well, you guys hang on. I'll be back in a minute. Get this retied. Okay, we back in business, guys. Going with the orange cork this time. I went up there to get my pink cork, and I got to thinking about it. If I go in there and wash this trolling motor through there, well, I would blow them out, so. But I did get close enough to see that the daggone, my line broke above my cork. So, I don't know, I must have stepped on it in the boat or frayed it somehow. Now, they made a, made a bad spot in it because it sure just snapped as soon as I set the hook. And I don't know what happened to the fish. We'll, we'll investigate that cork whenever we get done fishing here and see if, there's a, see if the hook's still on it. See if we can find any evidence. But the cork's just kind of floating around up there, so the fish isn't still on it. See if we can find his brother though. There ought to be another in here ready to bite. <clears throat> there he goes. He's swimming off with it. I guess I better catch him. Guess I better catch him. Here he comes. Here he comes. I don't believe he's on big one, but he's fun to catch. Fun to catch. Man, this is awesome. Guys, y'all need to get out there and get you some crickets. And go fishing. Take them kids with you, them grandkids. There he is. There he is. I knew he was in there. He's not a good one. He's not one of them wall hangers. But he's stretching that string. <laughs> he's just skiing in here. Freaking awesome. It's freaking awesome. He ain't big as a minute. That would be perfect blunt limb line bait though. I've still got my limb lines out, but I'm not baiting them today, so we're gonna let him go back and grow up. Look at here. Boy, I started coming out of there running, didn't he? He was headed to the next county. He was headed to the next county. Get this old six pound crappie, Mr. Crappie fishing line, no high vis line. We'll jerk his butt back into this county. Yes, sir. That is a nice fish. That is a nice one. He will, dang sure, go to the Greeks. There we go. There we go. He's fighting like he might be a little bit better than the ones I've been having to turn back anyway. He might be. He might be a keeper. Yeah. We're going to call him a keeper. All right, guys. I'm going to end up this fishing trip on this now. Y'all hang around with me, though. I want to go back up here to the house and we'll skin these buggers out and have us a little catch, clean, and cook. Now yeah, get me a, just an old kitchen spoon. Start the tail. Work up here on the, we'll work up here on the top of the boat, the tail, the bottom of the tail. Bring it all the way up to the head. A little at a time. It'd be easier if you had a clamp, a cutting board with a clamp on it, where you can clamp that tail down. It'd be a whole lot easier to hold these things. But I don't have one of those, so that might need, need to be a project for me to either buy one or just build one. I know they sell them at several sporty goods stores. Probably find them on, on the internet. I've always thought that I didn't need one because I always fillet my, my fish, starting from the head and coming back. But since I found this recipe from my, my Uncle Allen, told me about it. Since I've got this, and I don't have the drum to scale them in like they used to do it, I have to use a spoon. So I might be in my near future of investing into one of those play boards with a clamp on it. 
right, just knock the scales off of them. Let me rinse the table off a little bit. Now, fillet knife, start behind the gill, down to the bottom, down to the backbone, turn 90 degrees, follow it out to the tail. Now normally, I'd stop there, flip it over and flay the skin off, but we want to leave the skin on, so I'm cutting all the way through. Now, we just gotta get the, get the ribs out of that, that fillet. Down the other side, Just like it that. I can get it off here. There we have it. Scrap. Filet knife. Go down the bottom side of the ribs. Come around the top side of the ribs. It's a whole lot easier to cut those ribs out when you don't have the skin on it, but probably need to sharpen my knife too. There's the ribs. They're in the trash. Here's our filet. That will end up being shrimp cocktail. <laughs> Poor man's lobster. The other side, same thing. You just follow around the top of the rib cage. You come around here down the bottom of the rib cage. Cut that little V out of there. And like I say, with that skin on there, it's kind of tough to cut through. And I probably need to sharpen my knife, like I said. But that's it. Cut the ribs out, chunk them, and you're left of your just your fillet. All right, I'm gonna skin the rest of these. Get the rest of these skinned out and uh, scaled, and we'll be back whenever we get ready to throw them in a bowl of water. All right, we got these boogers ready to go on this pot. We got, uh, I've got about eight cups of uh, water in this and a half a cup of swamp dust. You can use Old Bay or whatever, any kind of uh, Cajun seasoning that you wanna use in there. And I'm just dropping these fillets in this water boiling water and we're going to boil them for a couple of minutes and see two or three minutes maybe and see how this turns out i bet it's going to be good y'all hang around i got some butter melted over here ready to roll just cocktail sauce we're going to try them out y'all hang with us all right so whenever i had this fish in here mm -hmm. it kind of cooled this off a little bit cooled my water off but I've got her brought back to a bowl now, so we're gonna let her simmer. I've already set a timer on the on my microwave here, so two minutes is what I'm going for. We'll see how it does. It really should probably start floating, just like it does in grease. Whenever you're cooking it in grease, you get it up 350 degrees on your on your grease, and uh, whenever the fish gets done, it'll float to the top. And this water, it should do the same. Of course, the water's not gonna be near as hot. Water boils at 212 degrees, so. I'm gonna say if you had it up to 350, it would probably evaporate pretty quick. So, but anyway, we're watching these buggers. I can't wait. Chomping at the bit, try this out. I know it's gonna be good. There ain't no way, there ain't no way it can't. I mean, it's brim. They're the sweetest fish in the lake. In this lake, anyway. They say walleye's better. Never ate walleye, so. Maybe one of these days we'll get up there and catch some of them. We're about ready for that timer to go off. Getting pretty close, another five seconds. That'll be two minutes. It's not really floating like I would expect it to, but but I think it still needs a little bit more. We're gonna we're gonna try for maybe another minute here. We'll hang on and uh, let this keep on boiling. I just really don't think it's quite ready yet. All right, I'll let it go another minute, and I really think. That it's done we're gonna try it anyway and see what we think about it if i don't flip it all out the floor Just dip this out here it looks delicious to me just hope it sticks together it stays together that's a lot of daggone fish i sure hope miss lick is hungry she was supposed to be cooking this but she's bad camera shy especially when i'm around we do have another channel where she does a lot of recipes, though, if you guys want to go check that out. Slick's Homestead is where she does all her recipes and cooking and stuff. So, uh, if y'all want to go check that out, click over there. I'll leave, a, I'll leave a link in the description down here so that you can see. And the dryer's done. 
So now we have to fold clothes and try this fish out when it goes off. Y'all hang on a minute, we'll, we'll try it. I'm not gonna try to burn my hair off my tongue. We'll wait a minute, let it cool off a little bit, and then we're gonna try it in this butter and this cocktail sauce and see how it is. All right, guys, I think they cooled off enough. Here's the moment of truth. We'll try them out of here. Try a little dab boat, dipping this butter. Ooh, loaded, loaded. Yes. It's a lot like eating, I guess, lobster, but it's not quite as tough as lobster. It's more like uh, maybe some crab meat. Crab meat dipped in butter? Yeah, let's try some cocktail sauce. See how I do. Mm. Mm. That reminds me, that reminds me a lot of eating shrimp. They bring little shrimp cocktails out there, you know, little. Little bowl of cocktail sauce, got the little shrimps hung all around the side of it. That's kind of what it reminds me of. Do this, y'all try this. It's pretty good stuff. I mean, it's not like it ain't shrimp, it ain't lobster, but it is real close race to it. it tastes pretty good. And it's probably a lot cheaper, I would think, depending on how much you spend on your gas and your boat, how much your gas, your uh, boat payment is, how much your insurance is on your boat, and all that good stuff. But anyway, that's all part of fishing. We love the fishing sport, so. That's why we keep on getting out there. Y'all just remember, fishing is a disease that only poverty can cure. So, y'all like and subscribe to this. Subscribe to my channel for me. Give me a thumbs up down there, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. God bless you.